read Acts 3, 1 through 10. <clears throat> this is a continuing saga story. We're not going to... We're not going to chew on all of it tonight, which is going to be hard, because we're going to want to, but um, we're going to take a little bite out of it. Acts 3, 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, which was 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. <clears throat> Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk, and then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone want to comment on what they feel that God is doing here? Showing out. <laughs> Showing out. Amen. Yes. Showing out. You know, by healing that man, not only did he heal the man, but he had to have increased Peter and John's faith. Right. It had to bolster their <laughs> Did it depend on the man having faith? I was expecting it. No, it did not. Well, it did not depend on the man himself believing in Jesus. We have to remember that because sometimes we try to give of ourselves to those who believe in Jesus when God might have some other plans for us. Um, <clears throat> there was a man who was carried to a house and let down through a roof and Jesus seeing their faith mm -hmm. healed the man. Mm -hmm. So I was just reading today someone had posted something about check your circle. You know, make sure you've got people in your circle who are praying for you. Make All sure right. you've got people in your circle that believe in Jesus because who you hang out with makes a difference. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, does anyone know where the, temp the gate beautiful was? Solomon's temple. It was there somewhere at the temple. If you were lame, if you were missing body parts, like you know, um, like the lepers, you couldn't go in. So he was restricted to being outside. Um, but different historians that I've been reading about have tried to locate where that, that gate was. And they're really not sure where it was. But years ago, we talked about this passage of scripture. And Sister Douglas pointed out that Jesus probably went by that man a number of times. That's right. But did not heal him at that time. Mm -hmm. Which is That's something right. to think about. Yeah. Peter probably did too. Uh, it's a timing issue with that. Yeah. Yeah, and Peter probably did too. Mm -hmm. He may have cried out prior. You know, he may not. He may have had this in his heart this time to cry out in his private prayer. God 
God says you don't have because you don't ask. Right. Um, somewhere, I think I wrote that. Um, if we don't ask of God, he's not going to just dump things on us. That's not how he does things. He wants us to be expecting and um, Peter told the man, look at us. He wanted him to be fixed on him the way Jesus would go to people or have them come to him and he would fix his attention on them and in turn they would do the same thing. And so look, up, look at us. And the man was expecting there was some faith there. It might have been faith for money. But Peter did something interesting. He said, I don't have any money. He, he declared his bankruptcy right off the bat. <laughs> and basically, we, we can help out people, but the church is not supposed to be the source of people's material blessings. Right. We're supposed to have something more for them. You know, Peter um, oh. <clears throat> had no material blessings, but he had an amazing adequacy in the spiritual realm. And it was in the name of Jesus. Right. So <clears throat> that name signified what Jesus is. Sid? We're just going to say, he had something, uh, uh, th no money, but, but he had something far better, and that's authority. He walked in authority. Authority and power. The authority mm -hmm. and power. And that's what the man needed. Somebody with authority, not somebody to give him a $20 bill, but somebody that had authority with God to give them what they need. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're also just coming off the day of Pentecost and mm -hmm. being filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and they may have walked by this man before mm -hmm. they may not have been ready Jesus said some only go by prayer and fasting mm -hmm. and so when you're praying for someone you've got to be prepared too yes yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> John? you notice that when he was healed and helped up he praised God, giving God the praise. And the people that are there, they're just astonished. Yeah. It's almost like miracles aren't enough to bring people to the truth. It's, even when they see, they still don't believe. You know? And so you see these people who uh, see a miracle, but they're not looking at the source of the miracle at all. That's happened today. Many people are hardly different from when they first started coming to church because they never, they never gave God their attention. <clears throat> yeah. Am, am, I, am I wrong about this? It's because we've been doing a lot of reading ourselves. And as far as I can tell, this was the first time that it wasn't Jesus. It was Peter. Um, well, they were sent out when Jesus, I Jesus know, sent them out. Sent them, you know, you're going to do great things and you're going to do this in my name and, and all that. But I don't remember <clears throat> reading about any of that until in, now. In chapter 2, verse 43, it says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Yeah. But now we have an account Specific There's a certain man. Yeah. And <clears throat> how about the yeah. seven? I just wonder. How about the seventy he sent out? That's right. The seventy <laughs> he sent out signs. Of, they did miracles and signs uh, when he sent the seventy out or the seventy-two, depending on your translation. But uh, they they did miracles and signs. He says, and, and of course Jesus said the thing about being. Uh, that the kingdom of heaven and bring the kingdom of heaven to them rather than signs and miracles. 
we covered that, Mark, uh, yeah, yeah. where Jesus sent out the 70. And in between that time frame, I think, is when John the Baptist gets beheaded. And then yeah. you have go back to where now they're back. They're telling Jesus. They're excited yeah. about everything that's happened. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Things. So. I thought it was a little interesting that somebody or people or friends, whatever, brought him. And then I guess deposited him and went on about their day or whatever. And they, they, it must have been a strategic thing because it was right at the temple. Mm -hmm. And that they must have felt, well, those people will be compassionate. They'll, they'll want to give money yeah. and help them out, you know, that sort of thing. But <coughs> all these people going past him and, and the people that brought him and him himself weren't at that level that where they had the faith for the healing, you know, so they were treating a symptom instead of getting the problem solved yeah. for the healing, yeah. so um, he had to have some good family or friends that would do this on a regular basis for him. Yeah. Any beggars you read about in the scripture, they have a physical, there's a sign that you can tell that they're in need, you know, they're not doing it like so many of our, our street people were. There may be need there, but there are so many, and there are some that are not real, really in need, and we don't know the difference. Um, but here, they often had a garment that set them apart. They had a physical ailment that usually set them apart. They were not able to work. And you know, in this case, what happens? This man goes from being an outsider a worshiper. Yeah. He's now allowed inside the temple. And and just to give you a sneak preview, you know, he doesn't want to leave the two who have <laughs> brought this to him. Um, so he had an opportunity there to hear the testimony that was going to come along with the healing. So you have healing, and you had a crowd. Later, you have an ex explanation, and then further on, you have some persecution. So if you're wanting to work for God, expect to be able to tell what's going on and expect that there might be some persecution because it seems to be the progression of what, what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Okay. It's interesting because, as you said, People going by all the time. Then the man was 40 years old, it says in chapter 4. He's 40 years old and he was lame from birth. So mm -hmm. obviously he spent a lot of time on that mat <laughs> sitting there. Uh, but it's interesting that Peter knew the moment. I, I mean, Peter may have passed by, we don't know, and probably Jesus too, and all that. But somehow at that moment, he knew <clears throat> silver and uh, the when the man asked him for alms, and then he said, so we're going to have enough. But he knew right then that was the time. Faith, he had that, <clears throat> that gift of faith rose up in him. Holy Spirit prompted him. <laughs> and at that moment, on that day, that man at 3 o'clock, that man got up and walked. But I think it was that the, <clears throat> the way they walked and the way we walk, sometimes a lot different. We you know, we sometimes will be grabbing people, praying for them, we want to get well, we plead. But there is a, a, a time that God uh, sends down that, that gift of faith that will rise up in you. You know when you pray for that person. I know. I've had it. If we probably all had it from time to time. You know when you lay hands on that person and pray, something's going to happen. And God's going to do something. You don't always know what, but he's going to do something. And uh, I, I think if that was the moment, that just not for that man, but it was the moment for Peter when he received that uh, gift. Maybe it was that still small voice I kind of was preaching about a couple of weeks ago that Ezekiel mm -hmm. heard. It, it wasn't in the wind and, and all of the noise and, you know, the rocks spread. <clears throat> it was in the still small voice. I don't know how to explain it, but 
you, you know when it happens. I mean, you know, right. something rises up in you. You've all, I, I, most of you've had it, I suppose, that when you go to pray, and, and the faith rises mm -hmm. up to the point that, and you, you sense, you feel that anointing, and you can hardly stand up. They can hardly stand up. And, and God does something, and many times it's to totally instantaneously heal that person. I've seen it happen. And uh, bear witness to it that God can do anything at any time. Amen. Amen. Well, they say he, he'd been there for 40 years and carried there every day to his <coughs> favorite spot mm -hmm. there, I guess. People got familiar with it. But what's really impressive for the people around there is that he, after sitting and not moving, he could jump to his feet yeah. and move like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I, mean, I was in a hospital for two weeks, and when I got up to start walking, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was in bed for two weeks. I, got, I was really hard to walk. You know? This guy here just jumps right up after yeah. four years. You know? yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. I think some of y'all might have floated different ideas about this throughout those different uh, observations, but um, why then? Why this day? Do we think it's more about where Jesus was at in his ministry or his apostles, or is it more to do with where that man was? And it could be That's all the above, yeah. but that, that man, we, we know he was there for 40 years. We know that these folks have been passing him, and because God needed that to happen at that time, maybe it was uh, part of it was to in, <clears throat> encourage him, his family, the uh, disciples, the people around him at that time, all the above. No, it, it doesn't say, but um, God rarely does anything for any one reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Parker, he will... <clears throat> He will inconvenience someone who has given their life to Jesus for someone else um, many times. And, and I, I know of many testimonies where that has happened and through someone uh, you know, who, who is very frustrated at all of the things happening, God has worked through that. And if we, if we let him, he will do that. And, a lot of times you will find out later what happened. Not always. Um, but in many cases they have found out that someone was reached through that or something happened through that. Um, right. Well, I mean, Jesus so. is, uh, has a, a bias or a, a heart for the lost, right? So, you mm -hmm. know, if there's anything that the resources of the kingdom are going to be diverted towards, it would be that. Right, that's right. Um, and this point in time, we know later that a lot of people are going to hear the story. I wonder what happens when the family goes back to pick up their family member who is not there. Um, you know, they probably heard rumblings about it long before they got to the temple. Yeah, they start um, doing the 40 yard day. Uh -huh. But, um, the disciples were accustomed to going to the temple. Yeah. They didn't have to. Mm. We are the temple, but they were accustomed to doing that. God didn't tell them, well, you don't have to do that anymore. And it was a means of outreach for them. Yeah. There were a lot of people gathering right. there as their custom was. And so they continued to do that for quite a while, you know, until persecution scattered many of them. But, um, Something else that um, it says in the scriptures in, in Acts is that many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Right. Mm -hmm. So it could be that that had to happen then yeah. in that place so that those priests yes. could be exposed to the wonders of God. You know, that may have opened their eyes at that point because Peter goes on to preach. We'll, we, you know, we'll have that our next lesson. But he goes on to preach to them. So many of them turn to the Lord, and it could be because of that man's healing. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of hard to tell somebody you've seen for 40 years lame at the gate. 
that they didn't get healed when they're hopping and jumping and skipping yeah. and dancing <laughs> around in front of you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the rest of the story is so good. Yeah. Um, the people saw, saw it and they were prepared to listen to the explanation. They might not have been, had it not been for seeing this. Um, when it says that in um, chapter 2, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. We don't really know where those things were done. Was it just among the body of believers that were baptized into their community? But this happened at the temple. <clears throat> and this man goes in with them to the temple, and lots of things happen afterwards. And um, it wasn't just for the church. Right. You know? Right. A lot of things we want to just kind of keep it for ourselves. This wasn't just for the church. It was it was an outreach. Right. You know? Um, God was being a mission director right then, Kevin. Yeah, he was. You know? <laughs> <laughs> This was going to be spread abroad. He's using that to show his glory. So, um, Jesus, Jesus was crucified. He was resurrected. He's seen by people for, you know, more than one day, 40 days. Um, he's, he's lifted up to heaven, and the disciples saw that. But these men were willing to die for what happened. And um, I can't remember if it's Chuck Colson or someone said that he knows that Jesus had to have died and resurrected because these men kept that testimony. He said, when you had Watergate, you had these men who couldn't even keep alive for three weeks. They all broke, <laughs> okay? They, you know, they were a mess. They couldn't keep their lives straight. He said that these men were willing to die for the testimony of Jesus. And, and we see that throughout, you know, um, the book of Acts doesn't just end, you know, here. So we see that, that people are willing to die for what Jesus did. I love his hunger. Yeah. Because... Your first reaction when you are healed would be to go find those that you know, your family. Mm -hmm. Look what has happened. But his first reaction was to run into where he had been forbidden to go all of his life. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see the inside of where that temple area was, and he had never been allowed to do that. And that the desire of his heart was fulfilled that day, not only in his healing, but in getting to walk into the yes. temple here. Yes. That's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was unfortunate that they weren't allowed to go into inside the temple. I'm sure that wasn't Jesus' plan. You know, not what he wanted, but um, no one should feel like they're second class. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that will idea changed as time went on. <clears throat> There's something about uh, when you're talking about his family taking him there every day, and, and that's the way the family unit was then. It was much tighter, much more together, and not as broken up and, and as alone as we are today. And the, there's good and bad in that, because they had support in, in, in that, but they also had the lack of faith that sometimes a family might have. Um, today, you know, our family in Christ can be much closer than, than our regular family is because mm -hmm. oftentimes they're not even around. You know, mine's yeah. 500 miles away. So, I mean, you guys are the family that I rely on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yes. And even if they are around, they, you know, they're not on the same page. Right. right. So right. you have a certain relationship. Not even in the same book. <laughs> you know, it seems like sometimes it's just instructed him to look at us. And I think that's key because quite often a beggar's head is down. He doesn't even look. He's just got a, 
a cup of his hand. And it's almost like Peter is saying, look at us for, it, it, in preparation for what he's going to do. Sometimes we don't look like that either. Yeah. We're kind of have sidetracked. We're not looking what's going to going to happen. And I think it was more like they're prepping him for what's supposed to happen, you know, instead of him just being, you know, sitting strange. A while ago, long time ago, and I don't remember if it was Marcana or Kevin that mentioned that the homeless, um, those who were out there asking for money, whatever, we often have a hard time seeing them. We don't look at them sometimes because when you look at someone and you look at, into their eyes, yeah. now they're kind of expecting something from you. And if you don't feel like you've got anything to give, you don't want to raise that expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, we often don't look at people or see them. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of experience with uh, the homeless. Uh, not context I have time to get into now, but I had an experience last night. Uh, I was walking with some people I had just met uh, to get some pizza on the way back. Uh, we were attacked um, at night point by uh, an enraged homeless man who was angry at us because we didn't look at him. And my two newfound friends ran and, uh, and I just stood there and I just talked to him. Yeah. And, I, and as they were yelling back at me, Parker, come on, you got to go, man. And I'm like, dude, he just wants to talk to somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. And why, you know, whether or not I should have stood when somebody had a knife is highly debated. <laughs> uh, and that, that's just something that is unique to me and my creation, I suppose. But in my story. Uh, so more on that another time if anyone ever wants to know but uh, it's it's just so yeah what you're saying is really really true it's really powerful you know and, and, I, and I've also found you know not that I'm sitting from anywhere to give any of y'all advice but uh, I've, I've noticed that a lot of times that you mentioned the assumption of expectation or maybe I'm saying the assumption part you just talked about the expectation mm -hmm. part I oftentimes wonder if that is our own internal assumption, our own insecurity. Mm -hmm. I don't know that a homeless person making eye contact with somebody walking by them and suddenly has a higher expectation on you. I would maybe even assume lower. Like they're, they're desperate, they want something, and they think it's us versus them in their shoes. And when somebody passes by and doesn't look at them, that only heightens that feeling. And they want more from that person. I think that you give them a good portion of what they want, you know, at least if not monetary or, you know, physical, you give them a, a, a soul or a heart, a spiritual portion of what they desire, even if they couldn't word that themselves. Uh, and now, you know, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll stop. But it's really, really interesting point you made. In town, we've, we've got um, definitely the ones that are, are on the street to make money as part of a gang, but we also have the ones that are on the street, and even though there's beds available, they're on the street because they're broken. And, yeah. you know, Jesus loves them. Yeah. Yeah. And if no one else is going to care, who is? You know, so we have to... No, it's not for everybody to stay when there's a knife present, but that's not always the case. And praying with those folks and taking the time to do that, it's a difficult thing for us to do, to break up our day and also know, okay, I've got to take a few minutes here um, and do something uncomfortable, maybe. Mm -hmm. But God has called us to, to win the loss, and, and these folks are lost. Mm -hmm. uh, each, each uh, I think each individual has a different story. Mm -hmm. that, uh, there's a gamut of, of stories here. Uh, some truly have a need and are in the position that they are through no fault of their own. Then there are others who have made a determination that's the way they're going to live and that's going to be their life. Uh, 
and, 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 and once again speaking with them, one, uh, in fact, two of our people from our prayer group, our Tuesday and Thursday night prayer group, uh, are, uh, have started a conversation with a homeless guy that lives in his car. He parks in the same area uh, 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 two to three times a week. He's always there at certain times, and he lives out of his car. Well, one of the ladies gave him a Bible uh, at one time, and uh, this broke the conversation. We have another man there that... Um, gave a story last night of how he stopped by and had a long conversation with him. He's had several conversations, but a long conversation. And it's, it's a very interesting story about this man. He's finding out all about his life and things, and they have a very uh, congenial uh, uh, conversation. And it's interesting. Um, I thought differently. It's amazing, because I would pass by you know, from time to time and see him over there. And uh, when they stopped and were talking to him, it, it, it's really interesting to find out the side of their story. And I think it's important to find out the story. How can I help you? And you need to know why they are where they are and uh, how, what you can do, whether it's physical, spiritual, whatever, to get them out if they want to be out. A lot of them yeah. don't want to be. That, that's, that's a problem. But anyway, I, I just wanted to interject that. That's an interesting story, though. Yeah. Um, my son, the one who is not a believer, was part of the Occupy movement a number of years ago. And so he was one of those who lived out on the street um, in Asheville, had at least two dogs with him. I'm thinking it might have been three, but at least two. <laughs> And um, he talked with a lot of homeless people. And um, actually, that's one of the reasons that movement broke up, is the homeless people found out, oh, they were getting free food and this and that. Yeah. So they would show up. Then they would get interviewed instead, instead yeah. of the Occupy movement people, <laughs> yeah. which that, that totally, totally was messing up their agenda. But um, my son has, at different times, taken in homeless people um, that he's met through some of his activities. <laughs> and um, one, of, one of them that I talked with once, he said, if you have a pet, you can't go to one of the shelters. Mm -hmm. And that pet might be the only thing that they're actually getting any love from. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's that. There are some who have homes, and they aren't making enough money to pay all their bills. So there's just, as you said, there's a lot of stories out there. Um, what, what do you think God wanted us to get from this amazing healing? That we can do that, maybe? Well, I think first, uh, they stopped, and they listened to him. They stopped, and they listened. They, they weren't, their destination wasn't this guy. They were walking by him. Mm -hmm. And so that, that might be the, the first lesson there is just be aware and be willing to stop and take some time. If they don't stop, God stops them. You guys had an interesting day when your car was stopped. <laughs> yeah, so we did. <laughs> yeah. Um. Maybe God has something better for the person than what we would initially in our flesh think. You know, it's easy to pull out maybe a few bucks or whatever and hand it to them and just go on. But is that really what they need? And uh, that's what I think. Uh, and, and, and God knew what we need. This area, there is so much available to poor homeless um, that yeah. uh, they, all, they really don't need us to, to show up with a dollar bill. Um, yeah. If you're going to show up, they, they need our prayers. Yeah. Um, maybe they need a phone number to, to, to know where to, to call. Uh, but most of them already have those phone numbers. Um, we have 
bags. I don't remember all the details um, that you can get and have to give out to somebody, Kevin. And that, that's, uh, I don't know if we got any made up right now, but those are just uh, little bags that will have a Bible um, during the winter, a scarf and a hat um, and gloves, um, some uh, granola bars or something, and, and uh, hand sanitizer. Oftentimes we'll get a little medical kit and put it in there, a sewing kit, um, just things that they might need on the, on the road. But uh, a handwritten note in there is also good to let them know that uh, uh, a note from you personally. Yeah. Um, the other part of that is, is these guys were, were prepared. And, and the Bible talks about uh, being prepared in season and out of season. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for that. If we're walking down the road and there's a need, right. you don't have time to fast and pray for a couple of days to get ready. Um, right. The need is there. Also, amen. Once they recognize his name, they wanted to fulfill it, but that's not where they ended. He took his hand and gave him a hand off. Yes. You know, he, he's initiated the movement by taking his hand and lifting him up. Um, because, in, like John has said, you know, two weeks and he could barely move. You know, naturally, this man did not know how to walk. Right. He had never walked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So without that physical support of you can do this, sometimes he might not have stood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I remember hearing a sermon one time about how love requires follow through. I feel like that's a very similar point. And if you didn't hear, he said love requires follow through. Yes. Follow mm-hmm. through. Yeah. Yes. When you lift him up, he pointed out to lift him up by his right hand. He just grabbed his hand. He grabbed him by his right hand. And I'm showing that he's given him power and authority to do this. The right hand is always power and authority. There's no reason to say right hand unless there's a reason. He just took his hand. Oh, goodness. Healing. Healing. <laughs> Salvation. Salvation. Fellowship. Fellowship. Yeah. Preview. That man did not leave these guys for a while. Um, he was part of a testimony. Um, you know, it's like a show and tell thing. You know, you go to school and you have whatever to show. They had a they had something to show. Yeah. Their, their testimony was on, you know, dancing and bouncing feet. I mean, in God's timing. He's, he's there for us like he was for this man. Mm-hmm. Maybe not 40 years, but, you know, he's always ready to go. <clears throat> Expectation. I, I, this, this guy was, he was expecting to receive something. And he was wide open, and, and I think he got a lot more than he, he uh, ever expected, but he would expect it. And I don't think he would have said, no, I'd rather have the silver and gold. <laughs> right, right. No. No. Bless us to say the name of Jesus. Yeah. That may seem ridiculous, but there's a lot of people that we've come in contact with through the years that really don't want their healing. They have their little incomes from their disabilities and they really don't want to be healed. And that's just really sad. Yeah, that's yeah. Sad. That's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. I'm 
make one comment? It, 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 just, it just occurred to me, you know how that happens. Something just popped in your mind and then I open my mouth and then I say, why did I say that? But anyway, and we, uh, it's interesting that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that they put of Nazareth on there. And Nazareth was kind of the place that, you know, nothing good comes out of. Uh, and really, I mean, that's what we said. You're, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. But I just, it just popped in my head. Why did he say Jesus Christ of Nazareth? I don't, I mean, except, I don't know. Jesus had said there would be false Christs. But, as you say, you know, when Philip first heard of Jesus, well, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Yeah, yeah, can any But if you look at the name, Yeshua, uh -huh. he wouldn't have been the only one. Yeah, there were a lot of Jesuses around. Yeah. Oh, yes, sure. And it, there's also in the scripture, it talks about when when Peter was um, preaching to Cornelius, he said, you know, Jesus Christ of Nazareth was published. It was published about him throughout all the region. Uh -huh. So when he said when he said it that way, he wanted him to recognize who he was. Right. It just well, Identification more closely with the man, with the specific man. Okay, I, I guess. So. You know, we, we give people a first name, usually a middle name, sometimes another middle name, yeah. a last name. <laughs> and yet, still, if you look up your name on Google, you're going to find other people with the same name, yeah. no matter how weird yeah, it oh, is. Yeah. When, when my son and daughter-in-law named my grandson Jaden, they had never heard the name before. He ended up dating a young lady with the same name in his teenage years. I mean, you know. Um, and, and there are others out there, um, some even older, but we had not heard the name until, until afterwards. So sometimes a place can zero it in. Um, I think he elevated the respect for that place by what's happening. I think Nazareth, uh, it could no longer be called a place that nothing good come out of. I mean, well, <laughs> uh, so I think it has a good ending. Well, it seems like God was very intentional on identifying Whoever, as we read all these stories and situations here, yeah. and the, that you've been talking about, that old group thing, <clears throat> is that everybody's important, and they may not be actually named, but many are. And again, God keeps track, and He knows them, and He He wants them to be heard or known about them. And <clears throat> um, of course, Jesus's uh, reputation. Somebody of, of sperm of somebody, and you know, and it goes on and on. I, I you know, it's a very um, respectful way, I think, that God has very often of mentioning who is the son of who and where they're from and so on. And it helps people put, put things in context. Mm -hmm. right. Like when I go home, if I go to the church I grew up in, you know, it's been how many decades ago. But they'll say this is Bridget's Evangelist Miller's granddaughter. Uh -huh. I mean, and then it's like, oh yeah, I remember. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's it helps people put in context. Uh -huh. You know, if you have a scene or you don't know somebody, having the backstory helps fill in those gaps. Yeah. 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 My, one of the things that this makes me think of a little bit that I have centered a lot of my life around is uh I don't think that God's kingdom is supposed to be a place where, and I mentioned this earlier actually, I don't think it's a place where we're supposed to prejudge or predetermine or assume things about things based on associated factors. So nothing good ever comes from Nazarene is the, uh, the known about town kind of fact. I think that God wants us to have an example
example of how maybe we're not always right about our assumptions. Right. And anytime that there's an opportunity to teach that lesson in a little way or a big way, I think that's that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It does. And we can change too. God can change. Exactly. Yeah. When I send birthday cards to two of my remaining aunts who I haven't seen in a long time, um, you know, they live up, up north, and um, just because I know that sometimes their memories aren't, I usually sign it with my, my first name, my maiden name, my current last name, and then I'll say Anna's daughter they're both from my mom's side of the family and they would know who Anna was putting all those names together. <laughs> Have you ever gotten a Christmas card or whatever and you're looking, oh, Anna's do you know who this is? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, but Peter was really specific in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This isn't me. This is by this power and authority. We have to remember that. That that's definitely an example to follow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But I like what Kevin said about, you know, hey, stopping and looking, you know, having some eye contact, fellowship. Um, anyone think of any other examples in here? Physical touch. Hmm? Physical touch. He, yeah. He yeah. Physical touch. Chicken, chicken by the right hand. Um, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That is what they did. Yeah. And so with the Bible. Yeah. Jesus often said, you know, I do what my father. I, I see him doing, my yeah. father doing. And, and he says, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. I was talking with a young lady after one of my classes on Monday, and um, when I found out she had CMT and she was in a lot of pain, I said, I'm going, she was sitting in her car, okay, so um, I said, well, I'm going to pray for you this week, and I got back to my car, and like the Lord said, no, you need to pray for her right now, so I went back <laughs> and, and prayed for her, um, and I've been praying for her ever since, you know, every time God has brought her to my mind, because she said that she might come back on Friday to the Friday class and bring her mother. So I thought, well, that would be great. Um, so keep praying for Rachel. All right. Any other examples? What about commands to keep? <laughs> Obey what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, and uh, don't question. Yeah. A lot of times it's easier to say, hmm, somebody else will do it. Oh, Kyla will do it, or Kevin will do it, or brother or sister Douglas will do it. Um, no. no. They might, but if they're not the one there right now, obviously you're the one who has to do it. John, you look like you have something to say. Get up and walk because sometimes we're going to be called to do certain things that either we don't feel adequate to do or we don't want to do or the timing's off or whatever, but we're told to do such and such. Get up and go and walk and do it. Yeah. I mean, when, when the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something, like that, Peter. Don't think it over. Just do it. Don't think it over. So too often people think it over, wait out, and, uh, maybe it won't go right. Or, you know, no, just do it. Mm -hmm. He used to have an expression in the church we went to years ago. You've all heard it, I'm sure. He was so heavenly minded, he was no earthly good. You know? We've heard it. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, the earth, so earthly minded, you're no heavenly good, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Each, I think most of us here have some incredible testimonies of what God's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
remember those because God's given you those testimonies, not just for you, because someone else might need it. Amen. Yeah. So, and the interesting thing is when you are grateful, God has reason to kind of pour out a little bit more. He'll say, well, you know, look at this. Amen. You know, and, and he'll pour out some more because you're going to tell people about it. If you're just keeping it to yourself. Right after it talks about him leaping and praising God, it says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. If he had just gotten up and walked and just casually walked in there, he might have just blended in with the crowd. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I don't think you can help but be so excited, kind of like the blind man, blind Bartimaeus, and all the all those miracles. They were really, really happy. Yeah, worship brings attention to God, not just right. you. Yeah. It's attention to God to, to yeah. make pe it, it perks up people's interest in what's what's different about them, what has changed in them, why are they so happy? What you know, they they just you know went through this terrible storm, or you know why why isn't he you know down in the dumps? Yeah. He's praising God, and I mean in his example, he's he's walking and stuff. So of course, but. You know, people can go through trials and, and still have an, an air of worship about them and still praise the Lord regardless of their situation. I think these miracles that Peter did and any of the disciples, when they occur, it's encouragement for them to see this happen as well as the person receiving it. Yeah. And it's encouragement it's for us. For that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In our day and age, for Kevin to end up in Honduras, I think it's going to take a plane. But who knows? Yeah. Spirit could pick him up and move him somewhere else. That's right. <laughs> and he might have to take a plane back. But if he's going to do that, I'd rather be Nepal. It's a long way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin's planning some trips uh, to Honduras and to Nepal. Um, he's the mission director. If you're interested, talk to him. Still in New York, too. What's in that? New York, also. Um, Javi and Danielle have had some changes up there. So right now, um, there's, they, they haven't uh, mentioned anything. But uh, if someone was interested, uh, or a couple people were interested, um, I could talk to them and put something together. Okay. Um, Sid, would you pray us, pray us out? Sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities you give us to dig into your word, Roy. We thank you that you've given us this your word, word that endures and will cause us to endure to the end. Lord, I thank you that you've given each of us the Holy Spirit that's here tonight. Father, help us to be more sensitive to your Holy Spirit as we go out in this world. Lord, let us know and, and use all oh, those things you've given us, oh God, to bring heaven to the places that we go. Lord, that they can see the kingdom of God that, Father, I thank you that you've empowered us to do the work of the Father, and you've called us to do the work. Amen. Father, help us to know, <laughs> help us to know that we are responsible for what you have given us, Lord. And as we go out of this place, Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit just fill each one, overflow us, Lord. Help us to walk under the anointing of the Most High. And Father, the people in this lost and dying and perverse world that we're in right now, that Father, they will see, they will see Jesus. They will see Jesus in us, Lord. And we'll be able to do those works that you've called us to do. Thank you, Father. 
that you've empowered us. And now, Lord, use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.